Hello everyone and welcome back to Diablo 3 here on the Husky Hair. We are on our level 6 wizard, Kreia, and we are about to head out the northwest gate of New Tristram. At the end of last episode we helped the uh, blacksmith, Heydrig, kill his wife and his infected friends. It's terrible. So now we're heading to the Weeping Hollow. Seems like most of the lag that we had in the last episode is gone. Which is good. That was, you know, of course, I, I wanted to start the series and Blizzard servers are doing its normal crap. But it seems like we are all good to go this time. Boom. This skill is really helping us out. It's been a while since I've played the, um... The, um... The wizard here. But man, she is some fun. So there's something I want to talk about in this episode and see in the comments is um, your favorite build from any Diablo game. Diablo 1, 2, whatever, 3. Uh, my favorite has always been the Meteor, Meteor Sword from Diablo 2. That was a really, really fun uh, build to make, and when it was finished, and you, you do whatever you know, me. do everything that the uh, the build asked you to do. I found it to be even better. It was just really fun freezing everyone and dropping giant meteors on their head. You can do something like that power. in this game. It's just I don't think it's as effective as it was in Diablo 2. Then again, it's been since season. Two since I've played Diablo 3 with any extent of time. So, maybe things have changed. We're heading to the cemetery. We need to find the Shattered Crown of King Leor. You dare attack me! Yeah, don't attack this wizard. She's not going on. Including clothes this time. We are about to level up here. Level 7. We're high rolling. We're actually making pretty decent progress. Let's kill these guys. Nicely level done. 7. There we go. Are unlocking anything here? Ray of Frost. No. That's it. It shouldn't take us too long to get something for our arcane orb. See, I was always a meteor sort person. Uh, besides that, the Bone Necromancer, which was infamously giving the nickname of Boner, uh, was also a favorite of mine. Let's go up in here. There's multiple crypts up here, and... You go through them, hoping, ho hopefully you get the right one. If not, you're still going to get some pretty nice experience going through the other ones. So. It's a win-win, really. But, um... Yeah, Necromancer... As much as I love the, um... The Meteor Sork, my favorite class in Diablo 2, by far, is the Necromancer. There's just so much you can do with it. So we are a little pack of elites here. Do some, he's almost some teleport. So he's a little annoying. He doesn't seem to be using his skills very much, though. So he didn't drop much besides gold. Oh well. What are you gonna do? Insignius the discordant. I've played, um, in this game, more often than not, I've played the, um, the Crusader. But before the expansion came out, I was more of a Witch Doctor player. I really enjoyed the Witch Doctor. That was my first level, uh, 60 in this game. Is this, a yeah, we have an event here. 
Grave robbers have defiled. New events. The Matriarch's Bones. So you go to these three pots. You grab her uh, remains. And you put them in the tomb. Simple as that. Nice, quick event. Nothing out of the ordinary. I you don't have enough damage with power. that. Arcane Lord. Here's our MVP so far for the uh, for the run. This also been a while since I've leveled up from like you know fresh level one too. And when these uh here we go, Lord Dunhill, her husband. So let's freeze them up. So when these seasons came out, you got rewards for doing things, and obviously um, they don't stay around forever. They're they're limited time. So. We would rush each other to level 70, get the uh, nice sets and whatnot, then try and find the cool items, like the weapons and whatnot. So, it's it feels nice to be able to just level up fresh again, experience the whole game the way it should be. And I'm going to take this series just up to... Uh, the uh, level 70 is the end of the actual story. Seems like a pretty good series right there. As for like torments and whatnot, I've never really exactly been um, too into doing um, that stuff by myself because it, it can be difficult. I know there's plenty of players out there that do it by themselves, and I'm, I'm happy for them. Good job. But I'm, I'm just, to be honest, I'm not that good. So. You know, we might actually take this character into some torment with some friends. Might do that. But well, we're going to focus on getting level 70 first. Protection Shrine. This is a pretty long um, tomb here. I'm actually starting to wonder if we picked the right one first. Good chance that we didn't. We're heading back up, but hey, you know, yeah, we didn't pick the right one. This isn't the right crypt. Oh well. The crown must be in one of the other ones. What are you gonna do? So I've been trying to think of what games to do on this channel after we're done our first three: um, Rabbi Ribby, Diablo Three, and Dragon Age Inquisition. Dragon Age is going to take a little bit. Um, I don't think we're going to take too long to get through Diablo here. Uh, Rabbi Ribby won't take too long at all. But um, I'm trying to think of um, what so types good. of games that people would like to see. And I've come across a couple. Uh, I'd like to keep at least one series to be like some kind of like a weird JRPG or platformer like Rabby Ribby. It, it, it brings some levity to the channel. You know, obviously we're, uh, we're the Inquisitor in, in uh, Dragon Age and we're the Nephilim here in Diablo. It's very serious and there's lots of... Um, lots of things riding on us to get the game, get, to finish the story and save the world and whatnot. So at least like with games like Rabby Ribby, sure they're weird. Some people might find them to be uh, fan service-y. Uh, I picked it because it's you know bunnies and sure it's weird, but that's that was my that was the appeal to, to it. So that's why we picked Rabby Ribby. But. Um, so I'm going to keep at least some kind of game like that going on the channel all times. Because there's, there's an audience for that, you know? People like to see those types of games, so give it to them. So I've been thinking about... Um, I, become more I just powerful. picked up Mega Dimension Neptunia 7 for um, the PS4. Never played a, a Neptunia game. I have Rebirth 1 uh, on Steam. So I made sure I asked around, can I play this game without having played any of the other ones? And from what I'm being told, yes, you can. You'll miss out on certain jokes that uh, point back to previous events in the series. However, most of them are standalone adventures. So I figured 
I've always wanted to try out the series because I love the uh, the parody nature of it. You, you're basically, from what I understand, you're playing almost as like a humanized game platforms, and like the the world you live in is like a it's it's like a living computer type thing. It's pretty interesting. I could be completely wrong there, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the track of what it really is. And um, it just seemed like it was quirky and that I could have some fun with it. So I picked it up for the PS4. And, ooh, ooh, treasure goblin. Oh, no. I don't have enough arcane power. You dare attack me! Oh, no. We're gonna miss him. We're gonna lose him. We're gonna lose him. Oh, we're gonna lose him. No. 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 You stay here. You give me. You give me treasure. We got treasure. Just a bunch of crafting mats. Ain't that glorious? Glorious. Oh, well. You never want to leave a treasure goblin hang. You never know. Plus, you can get the greed. The, they're like uh, the realm, which I've never been to. So hopefully, at some point in this playthrough, we get to do that, if that's possible. In this, I'm not sure if you have to be in this like a certain like torment level or something like that. But um, all right, let's see if we got the no nope, again. This is the wrong <laughs> crib. Okay, well that's gonna end it for this episode, guys. Um, hopefully the next crypt we pick will bring us to the Shadow Crown and we can continue our wizard's quest. Thanks again for watching. Um, I do want to say apologies for the first episode and the spiky audio. I have no idea what, what caused that. I certainly wasn't too close to the mic, so it might have just been some kind of a glitch. So hopefully this one turns out a lot better and we don't have to put no annotation warnings in the beginning. So thanks again for watching. I'm glad the channel is finally up and running and we're on our second day here. Uh, appreciate you all being here and check out the other uh, videos and enjoy. New videos are coming out every day and I would appreciate it if you stick around and watch them. You can find two of them right here. Oh, and a sweet picture of Bun Bun. You want to make her happy, right? Do the right thing. Push that big red button down there. Subscribe to the channel, get some more awesome content, and follow me at those social media pages. Thanks again. Thank you all again for watching this video. I don't have any sponsors to plug, but I do co-own a startup company called Dropster, which just released a new product called OpenFeed, which can be found at openfeed.io. OpenFeed is a real-time information center for gamers and journalists to ensure they stay up to date with everything happening in the gaming industry. OpenFeed is free to use and ready to enhance the way you get news about everything gaming. Check it out at openfeed.io.